This is Table Talk, a ministry yeah. of First Christian Church of Pinckneyville, and I'm your friend, Josh Yachts. I'm Mickey Emerson. I want to welcome Lonnie Smith to the table of our first guest in Season 3. Lonnie, welcome. Uh, deacon of the First Christian Church of Pinckneyville. And um, Lonnie has a page on the websites, along with Mickey and I, under articles and essays, and you can join in and read those articles uh, for FCCOP.info under articles and uh, so is it under articles and essays? I it mean, is. Uh, yeah. Articles and essays. Yeah. 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 So Lonnie, thank you for doing that. And once again, welcome. But Mickey and Lonnie and I are writers here. We hope that you like those articles. And also, let me just go ahead and say, ever since we've been on the show, it's been a couple of weeks, but Mickey's got a new commentary out, uh, the book of Judges. And... Um, we're looking forward to hopefully getting that online soon and maybe hooking up with uh, some kind of subs- uh, pay m- paying method to where people can buy those offline and then we can maybe ship those out. That was totally unexpected, man. Uh, just to give a brief summary of the occasion, I, I, I had written a, a series of pages on the Book of Judges that covered each one of the individual judges. And a couple of weeks ago, they called me up after morning service. Mm. And uh, Josh and the elders, and Deacon. and, and uh, Deacon Lonnie here, and uh, and he said, "Hey, we've got a surprise." They had turned those papers into a book, into a commentary, and uh, I, I know I was a deer in headlights. If somebody got a picture, I was like, <laughs> "Actually," and my uh, mother was in the audience. <laughs> she did. Yeah, your mom got a picture, um, and so it was, is... it was it was incredible. And, uh, and I, I sit and read it, and and. You you are it, it's you did a phenomenal job. Well, I, I appreciate mean, that. You sure, you brother. Uh, yeah. So uh, there there's maps and outlines in there and and uh, I want to say it was about 30, the, uh, sixty pages. The something? circle of struggle that the uh, that the Hebrews went through mm. was was in there. Mm-hmm. Um, you know the, the struggle, redemption, mm-hmm. and uh, you know apostasy and everything that came came along with it. Sure. You know, but yeah, it's, it's somewhere around 60 pages. Yeah. Forward written by Jeff Tucker, yeah. minister over in Praise God Ohio. for that. Oh, I love yeah. Jeff so much. He's, he's a wonderful individual. Jeff, yeah, and, and that commentary, here's what's cool. The sovereignty of God working or providential grace of God, call it what you will. But Well, there is a distinction, but that's another theological debate or whatever. But Jeff and I were able to come together through that. And that that's that was really cool because that commentary brought us not that we were apart we just really didn't know each other yeah so that commentary brought us to be able to communicate and now we yeah so cool things are happening yeah and um, I want to start off by doing something totally random okay so each each one of you guys and um, are gonna have one minute and we're gonna call this the duck sermon all right because when your time is up, what you will hear is this sound. Do you need to hear it again? Please. Now, what we're going to do is each person, you and you, one at a time, you can't say nothing when it's his turn. Our host or our guest will go first. Now, how this is going to work is Mickey is going to point to a random object or call out a random object in this room. Okay? Is this going to be like I spy? No, you're just going to point to a random object in this room, and there's plenty of tangible things here. Lonnie, you have one minute to make a sermon out of that, out of that, um, a quick little sermon out of that object. All right? So you'll have one minute to come up with something and try to present the gospel. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be fun, man. Be it's, kind, Mick. <laughs> you have one minute. And um, so you find your object. Have you found it yet? Yes. Okay. Now you're going to say it out loud because obviously they're probably not going to be able to see it. So uh, say it. We'll give him a couple seconds to ponder, and then I'll let you know when this is going to start. <clears throat> All right. Globe. We have a globe. Hang on, right hang on, hang here. on, hang on, hang on. The globe. The globe. Three, two, one, go. The beginning. God created the heavens and the earth. The Lord God 
through the power of his voice, said, spoke a word into, into nothingness mm. and brought it into creation. Uh, the power of the Lord God is so immense that if, if he can create the world with just the power of his voice, then he can do such miracles as cleansing our souls mm. from the nasty, evil, s sinful nature. And, and we still have that sinful nature, but he can cleanse us and make us righteous in his sight. All right, Lonnie brought oh, in this so he Wait brought in he brought in so cleansing from the globe from the wonderful. globe. That was wonderful. Okay, stop. <laughs> <laughs> okay, really. Oh man. Uh, okay. All right, Mick. That's great you know, job, Lonnie. Isn't that awesome to be able to do that? Yeah. A friend of mine, Brent Calloway, and I do that all the time to That's one another, cool. and it's it makes you. But you know what this is going to be like, just real quick. What this is going to be like is Jerry Lee Lewis was, was on tour, and so was Chuck Berry. Well, Chuck Berry had a clause in his contract that he always closed the show. But at the time, Jerry Lee Lewis was the top performer in the country. All right? and, but they were like, no, Jerry Lee, you've got you've to open for Chuck Berry. And he wasn't the least bit happy about it. So he went out there with his piano. Just Jerry Lee and his piano, and he just rocked it. I mean, he just lit the crowd on fire, and then he turned around, grabbed a bottle of booze, poured it on his uh, piano, lit it on fire, and kept playing. I was like, <laughs> yeah, how does Chuck follow and that? And then he was like, he said, follow that killer. <laughs> And so that's kind of how I'm feeling right now. Yeah, okay. well, no, no, I, I said all hey, that for that. No, yeah, no, that's, well, that's how I'm feeling. All right, so, amen. Now, right. now you get to pick an object for me, and um, and then one of you guys can do the same for me. That way it's fair. So you will pick an object, Lonnie. Are we ready, or do we want to discuss Lonnie's? Okay, all right, now hang on. Lonnie, your object, but don't start yet. Mink, I, I think I'm gonna. You're gonna knock this one out of the park, brother. Josh's keys is sitting over there on that. Here we get that. You got a lot on there, so wow, man. Would you look at that? All right. When Jesus Christ was uh, hanging out with Peter, mm. he uh. He was asked. He was asked many questions, and he he, uh, he asked him. He said, "Who do you say I am? You are the Son of God. You 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 are, you are the Savior of the earth." He says, "Because you said this, uh, you have the key to heaven." I'm paraphrasing, of course. Yeah. Um, but yeah. Peter had the key. All right. The key was that Jesus Christ is our Lord and Savior. That He is the one and only way into heaven. All right. Now, along with that key. You can think of one key, but along with that key, hold that up, Josh. Yeah. Could you hold that up, please? What you also have, you, man, you got this lanyard right here. All right. You've got a flashlight. We've got so many other tools that we can use with that key to make that effective. So please do not neglect to use all of the tools that the Lord has given you to make your way into heaven. Amen. Wow. wow you gave me baby. goose bumps on that one, brother. I mean, man, he brought it back to the tools. Absolutely, and the amen. Gifts, man, oh, that was terrible. I, I totally, oh, dude. I totally, dude, tore up that verse, that passage. It's, it's okay. No, no, I hey. very practical. And, Absolutely, and and that that was useful. All right. So, Who's going to pick his object? I th I think uh, our I think our Zeb. audience here. We have yeah. an audience. We member. have an audience back Zeb, here. You want to pick a pick Lonnie's something? Lonnie's here with us, so I would like for him. Is okay. that okay? Sure. That's, that's yeah. fair. Here. All right. All you got to do is hit start. Okay. So I've got about three seconds after he tells the object. <clears throat> Time. There's an orange base right back there. Oh. What is it? The orange that, base. That orange base. Yep. That orange. A little yeah. jug. All right. 
All right, man. You ready for this? Yeah. You mark, get set, go. Leonard Ravenhill, want, Leonard Ravenhill, an old Methodist preacher, conservative, fire brimstone preacher, said once, quote, A true man of God will be broken and shattered like a vase. And close quote. And that's the way it is. Uh, when we become converted, uh, regenerated, spirit, baptism, okay, amen, it seems that what happens, Zeb, is that a Christian is a man made in the image of God, but a Christian also is a fallen man. That they're still, although fully ransomed, we're not fully redeemed yet. Sin still has a nature. So through the process of sanctification, God breaks us and shatters us, just like Jacob goes through the schooling at Uncle Laban's house to make us more holy, more useful for the Lord, and then he puts us back together just like that vase. Four, three, two, one. Okay. So, yeah, it... it turn that off. <laughs> Dead nibbit, turn that so thing the, off. So the broken vase, that was good. That, that was good. That is good. God way to go, Zeb. Yeah. Back together, right? Hey, way to go. Uh, that's... But here's the thing. Way to go, gentlemen. Be not an easy thing to do. No. No. Way okay. to go, Lonnie. Way but, to go, Lonnie. Hey, that was totally off the cuff. What a great way. Man, Lonnie didn't even hesitate. I mean, he just... No, no, it just came out. It was it was incredible. When uh, he he pointed out that jug, uh, oh, and I can't think, I'm horrible with Old Testament uh, names. Uh, uh, she, th I think it was Elijah... There was a widow woman. And he told her he's, she was trying, oh, trying, uh, trying to feed her family, and he's, he just take some oil and pour it in his jug and just keep pouring, and it wound up filling up. Was that jug Elijah after or jug. Elisha? That was the that was uh, Elijah. Oh, Elijah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. The widow's oil. oil yeah. yeah, she never ran out. She never. Yeah. What Not a, until she ran out of Cana. The wine jugs. Mm -hmm. Those were. Mm -hmm. That's an interesting conversation because in Israel, those they had those jugs, they had those big concrete mm -hmm. barrels. The Roman Catholic Church has built a church over that in Cana. Were they authentic, two thousand years old, or yeah, so a couple replicas? of no, that they, they were. There was a couple that were authentic. Wow. Um, of course, though they're preserved, sure, in yeah. museums, but they also have replicas. But the Catholic Church has tainted that by building a church building on top of that Man. location. That's sad. And it is. And, um, well, on the location where the in Cana, where they have built this Catholic church there with these jugs, they, um, they have this one area where it's preserved, and and they believe that if you're courting or a young man looking for a wife, then you go to this site and you put this note and you throw it in there. And and maybe that's how you can find your wife. It's just weird traditions. Mm -hmm. I just want to see the archaeology sites. I yeah. don't really care about these Catholic buildings. Yeah. You know, so you, you, when you go over there and, and I would, <clears throat> you know, and a lot of people, even in the Christian church, are like, well, I don't need to go over there. Well, you don't need to. Uh, but it, but it sure is a blessing. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm, obviously we're not going to go now because of the vaccine mandates and everything. But um, I want to go. Yeah, but but man, if you can, you know, go over there, and um, which who knows if that'll ever happen. But if you can, I would encourage people to go mm -hmm. with an open mind, and um, just just go for the archaeology sites, man, mm -hmm. and just take your Bible, mm -hmm. sure. and man, experience that because it is. It's the Bible land, man. It made me think of uh, the sermon you gave on Jacob the other night. Mm -hmm. And he he, uh, he he got to his point, and he had had his dream, and he just knew that that area, he had heard from the Lord, and he just knew that that area was holy. Mm -hmm. All right, it was that like as if that one specific area mm -hmm. was where God was, right. as, as, as if he does not encapsulate everything around us. Um, and so he built an altar to the Lord right there. And, um, uh, but, uh, as you touched on that, you, you made it abundantly clear that the Lord is not just in that one spot. Okay. Right, there, right. There's nothing special about that one little strip of land. Mm -hmm. Um, 
And so I uh, I feel that way about I've I've never been to Israel. I would love to go there. Yeah. Uh just just for the sake of experiencing what you have. Mm-hmm. Well, and you, seeing where yeah. Christ has walked, where the apostles journeyed, uh you know, where where Mary gave birth, all these wonderful things. Sure. Um but even though this building has been put here or this building has been put there, um I I feel like uh what happened mm-hmm. can't be tainted. Sure. All right. Sure. The, the, yeah. the, the spirit, the spirit of, that's of true. the, of that, of that moment, mm-hmm. um, will always be there. You know, and that's beautiful, Mick. And I, so. and, and I, I think that's the right attitude to have Lonnie. Yeah. I, I do brother, that because right. some have member, and I'm not going to mention any names and not anyone obviously from here, but I remember, uh, even someone basically bashed me for wanting to go. And I'm like, no, hold up, man. That's, that's I, I said, that, that's not right. I said, I'm not acknowledging that, you know, that I'm not going to worship that ground over there. We mm-hmm. worship Jesus, man. But, you know, to but not everybody's going to have the privilege to go. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So e- even rather it's a, a, a minister or a deacon like you guys or an elder, man, if you could send somebody even from your own local congregation to go, um Boy, it sure would be helpful. Just, to, oh. I mean, Google searches well, can only take you so far. Yeah. You know, uh, so when it, there was a couple different when Jesus and the disciples were going across the Sea of Galilee, and a big storm come in, and uh, the Sea of Galilee is actually kind of like a funnel. There's, there's now this. Yeah. This is from teachings that yeah. I. I'm mean, not that I have no. been there, but mm-hmm. it's it's kind of like a funnel. You You're get right. these. You get these warm winds that comes in from the south, and it and it meets that mo- moist air, and it just it can just brew up a storm, and make that real water really turbulent really quick, mm-hmm. and it just pops out of nowhere, as I've been told. Yeah. But uh, you know. To, if you were able to witness one of those storms and get get a feel and place you in that boat when Jesus stands up and says, Peace, be still mm-hmm. in the water. I, I, I mean, you know, the, the disciples, were, they were like, what 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 kind of man is this? And you know, you were talking about philosophy before the show. There's the Lord acting and transcending all the laws of metaphysics right there. Absolutely. You know, and, and flipping all of that on its head. Mick, what do you what do you when you when we think about transcending the laws of metaphysics, what what comes to your mind? The oh Lord. My goodness gracious. You know. Uh the the Lord. Well, I think of um or whatever you know, <laughs> I know Mick, these two guys there's, are there's, philosophers, man. Um, no, 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 by no means. Stretch of the imagination. <laughs> I'm a novice. <laughs> uh, I I read stuff and I just regurgitate bits and pieces of what I've read. Yeah. Um, but uh, they there is a, a generator over in uh, Switzerland, Sweden, Norway, but it's a it's an atom splitter, and what they do is they do their best to create that sonic boom that that. that uh, that explosion that created the world. And what's that called, Lonnie? There's a name for that. That that giant. Uh, oh. Uh, to, to recreate that moment. Particle accelerator. Particle accelerator. Thank you very wow. much. Wow. Wow. Um, but uh, CERN. CERN owns that. C E R N. CERN owns that particle accelerator. But they're doing their best to uh, to take the place of God. Mm, yeah. Um, and. Uh, yeah. Yeah, there's there's only one that has been able to replicate that. Amen, amen. Uh, yeah, and uh, and that was our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. So. You know, and, and and kind of bringing philosophy into that. Yeah, uh, it, it's reasoning and logic, really. Stop and think about this. They they say, well, what was well, something blew up billions of years ago and expanded? Okay. Well, that explosion had to have a cause. Without a cause, it, it's kind of a violation of the law of uh, what, what do you call that? Uh, law of contradiction. No, uh, uh, excluded middle. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna draw a blank. Uh, anyway, uh, like uh, 
I keep wanting to say pneumatics, but that ain't it. <laughs> uh, now here I was going to say this and it, uh, but anyway, that 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 breaks science scientific principle. There yeah. has to be causation sure. for it to explode. And, nothing uh, explodes on its own. So then now they changed their story. So well, nothing explode. Mm-hmm. Well, uh, pardon me, but nothing times nothing is still nothing. Mm-hmm. Nothing divided by nothing is nothing. Mm-hmm. Nothing. What is plus nothing? nothing? What is nothing? Nothing is nothing. <laughs> <laughs> but what you're doing right now is Lacrates killed. Okay, because uh, he he was he was put to death uh, for corruption of the youth. Uh, but what he was doing was was he was making people feel by asking them questions. When mm-hmm. he when he would go to her and say, "What do you do?" and the painter would say, "Well, I paint." Why? Because <laughs> well, I like painting. Why? Well, because when I was a kid, it interested me. Why? Seven and, times. And it would keep going. The and seventh it, time, the you're, yeah, you're, and so you're it like, just kept oh. going back and back. And then he would do that to legal students Mm -hmm. and to other philosophers Mm -hmm. and to politicians and well once he got to the politicians you know they started getting crabby like Mm -hmm. why are you asking so many questions um and (laughs) (laughs) so when he got to the youth they really got crabby because he got the youth to question authority amen yeah Yeah. uh so but what what socrates was doing was taking everything back to a beginning Mm mm-hmm there has to be a beginning. Yeah, everything that began to exist has a cause. Right. And, and the universe right. did begin to exist, so therefore the universe has a cause. The word I was looking for earlier was inertia. And um, Lonnie, it seems that our homes are constantly being invaded by the culture. And as Christian parents, we do our best to monitor and regulate, obviously, or I hope that we are, what, what our children are watching and these kind of things. And your children are a little bit more grown, I guess, not necessarily Mick, Zeb, and Aubrey's similar, but our homes are invaded by the culture. What's some some ways that we can protect our homes from the culture coming in? <clears throat> it seems like these advertisements are really going after our children nowadays on uh, not well, just TV, but social media and all these things what are some ways we can protect that you know honestly i think that uh, we we have to have honest conversations with mm-hmm. their children you know I, I i try to zeb and i go be out hunting or whatever and uh, i'll find teachable moments mm-hmm. uh, i i actively pursue teachable moments uh, something will come up in conversation, and I'll switch it from the earthly to the to the spiritual. Amen. And uh, I, I I try to make allegories, and and uh, for one, keep keeping their mind on the spiritual, ensuring that they're spending time in prayer. Like Zeb had several tests today. Mm-hmm. And he was telling me about it before he went to school today. And I said, I said, make sure you spend time in prayer before you go take these tests, Amen. Amen. you know, and, and he did well. That's awesome. Brother. And, 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 but, but keep their mind on the spiritual and, and one, you have, you have to, you have to have a little confidence in your children as well. Mm-hmm. You know, they're, they're not going to be perfectly sinless right. I, I, you're right. that's not going to happen right they're going to make mistakes and the thing of it is is how did you learn did you learn from your mistakes because mm. i sure learned from mine amen you can try to teach them and and to avoid those snares but the truth of the matter is they're going to fall into those snares mm. and when they do fall into the smaller pits and traps in life that's the time to teach them before they fall into the deep bottomless pit and man that was that was that was good i i really i really thank you for that man and and i knew that you guys would give good feedback Mm -hmm. to those thoughts that i was having and Mm -hmm. thank you for that man that that really that was really good brother it was it was like warm i mean just because (laughs) it was it was it was real and it was raw 
and it was it was uh, very practical and i and i liked how you put an emphasis on prayer with your children mm -hmm. Because, you know, even the disciples, the Lord, teach us to pray. And, yeah, that's right. You know, they didn't say, and, and, teach and, me to walk on water. Or that's anything. the thing. You know, we, we, tend to, we tend to try to jump in the drive, sure. you know. Sure. They, they have to get in. The only way they're going to learn how to drive, they got to get behind the wheel. That's right. Prayer is so, a union with the Lord. Yeah, right. they, they, have, have, to they have, have to pray. Right. So this will show, if mm -hmm. you look back on it, and, you know, even praying before the show. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, the little things like that really are the big things mm -hmm. and, Absolutely. and you know god has directed this we've had fun it's mm -hmm. been encouraging and and we're all going to leave with lifted spirits and you know we started out with a game we got to talk about israel i mean man we got to talk about a good um really something that's facing our culture yeah you know with our children yeah and um but this morning at four o'clock this morning uh i get a text message from mickey it was, uh, oh, it was a quote from Spurgeon. Yeah, I'm, I'm trying I to get Spurgeon. all into where you, you were at here, and then we'll close with that. There's Josh Owens. There he is. Minus the 20 pictures I sent you. Oh, he, he did. He sent me a bunch of silly pictures. I love them. Well, not all silly. One of them was of him and his wife, and, and that's, yeah, that's beautiful. Uh, Charles Spurgeon says, My trust is not that I am holy, but that being unholy, he is my righteousness. Amen. Uh, what, what all was said after that? Glory to God, aware of my fallen nature after baptism, new relationship with sin. Yeah. Amen. And, uh, you know, you had mentioned the home and the culture, and we get this idea that um, once we're baptized into Christ for the remission of sins and the gift of the Holy Spirit, that that struggles go away, that we're going to live this this cushy life with the Lord, you know. <laughs> Um, things are just going to be kosher because we're, we're with God now is that, uh, that life is going to be hard. Mm. Okay. That there's going to be a lot of mud and yuck and messiness involved. Uh, God is not going to take the homosexual relationships, the communism, the, this, the, that out of your life. He is going to put you smack dab in the middle of it. And he is going to force you to rely on him as you deal with it. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, you, you can take your children out of every possible scenario that you can imagine. Uh, but one day they'll have to grow up and they'll have to face those scenarios. Um, and it's our job to equip them right. uh, Absolutely. so that one day they will be able to face those scenarios. Um, and uh, that they can face them with love. Mm -hmm. And not, uh, not with scrutiny. Not, not with... Uh, Bitterness. Angst or bitterness, uh, but but with love and patience, and the uh, the compassion that Christ had with the sinners that He was surrounded with. That's right. Uh, Amen. The love and the compassion that He has with us mm -hmm. as we still continue to sin, and as we still continue to grow, uh, just just like our kids. Mm. Yeah. Right. Never stop. Never, never stop never. growing. Never stop learning. Amen. You, as you were saying that, I was thinking, pick up your cross and follow me. That's what He said. I know one thing, I'm a sinner, and Jesus is a great Savior. Amen? Amen. And the same is true for you, dear friend. And there is a, uh, there is a new, uh, there's an evidence of the new birth. And our culture today will tell you that there is no such thing as a necessary evidence of the new birth. But I'm here to tell you in truth and love that there is a necessary evidence of the new birth. Your life will never be the same. It doesn't mean that it's going to be, as Mick said, peaches and cream. But I am here to tell you that you will be thinking new thoughts, God thoughts, and the Holy Spirit, evidence dwelling within you, will not allow you to continue in that sin, but encourages and beseeches and comforts and strengthens us to put away that old nature and to put on the new. There is a striving with the flesh but thanks be to God, through Jesus Christ, we have the victory in Him alone. Through the written Word of God alone, and through the indwelling Spirit within us. Gentlemen, thank you for your time and fun. And this was awesome, man. It's been it a pleasure. Love you guys. We want to thank you for watching, and we once again would ask that you would hit the bell icon, subscribe, and like, and share. 
or don't like it, that's fine. We are able to take instructive criticism, and um, the Bible says faithful. Faithful. Think about this. Are the wounds of a friend, but deceitful are the kisses of an enemy. So chew on that. Get her done. (laughs) And remember, Jesus loves you, and God is good all the time. All All the time. Jesus loves you. This I know, Lonnie. For the Bible tells me so. Amen. But God is also just. (laughs) He's a holy holy God. And anyone that tells you to repent of your sin. There you go, there you go. (laughs) (laughs) My papa made that. Lives in Blotcher, Indiana. Population 300. Nice. Papa Yonts. Man, awesome. Dow's bigger than that. We got 450. <laughs> man. Blotcher's an interesting town, real quick. Blotcher, Indiana. Google that. There was a man growing there. All there is is a junkyard in that town. And there was a man named Larry Plussinger. And he had this massive junkyard. Rumor is he had millions of dollars stashed in this junkyard somewhere. But he had this big old beard and bald head, and he wore the same bib overalls every day, and he would stand out in the middle of the street on a highway eating a bologna sandwich. That's all I remember about that town. <laughs> Blotcher, Indiana, ladies and gentlemen. I'll tell you what, a bologna sandwich sounds good. It does. I'm it like really bologna. does. I don't like bologna. Yeah. There was also an old man in the general store in Blotcher named Flash, and he chewed on cigarette buds like he would eat them. And chew on them like gum. Well, that that don't make you want to puke. I don't know what will. <laughs> this is Table Talk, a ministry of First Christian. Thank you. I'm Josh. Thank you. And I'm Lonnie. God richly bless you. We could have done without the blocker talk. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't. Hey, Flash. Whether whether. <laughs>